stuffed engines, screeching tires, or racing, and that's just from watching. That's 106 miles per hour. An entirely different experience in the passenger seat. Ryan Bourne is a trainer with the Ohio Peace Officer Training Academy, or OPADA. On this day, role playing, he's the bad guy. And then we should just feel a, a soft tap, and then we'll just spin. <laughs> and that's that's all there is to it. The precision immobilization technique, or PIT, is a move to stop a pursuit. ABC6 photojournalist Rob Forrest captured this pit by Gehanna police more than a decade ago. It requires specialized training. Warren says it's not a ram or a violent crash. Can it be dangerous? Sure. Everything we do is dangerous. You know, Done right, Warren says you won't feel it until it's too late. But the person is caught off guard. They are, and that's, and that's the thing is, is they're typically surprised by what just happened. Uh, again, because they're focused on driving the car, they don't see us come up. Uh, all of a sudden their car spins and, and now they don't know what to do. Fellow Opata trainer Scott Watley Are you on four, Ryan? shows us a third perspective. So it'll look something like this. His role, the officer. In seconds, we pull up behind Ryan or the bad guy, close the gap and take the place of his car. Soft contact. A tap? Yeah, like a tap, right. Once the tap is made uh, with the violator, we'll turn the wheel a quarter turn, essentially like a lane change. He spins and stops, chase over. We teach at Opata uh, below 45 miles an hour. Why obviously, is that? Obviously for safety reasons. We can greater predict where the violator car will end up uh, at speeds lower than 45. By the time officers leave the training course, they've completed roughly 60 to 70 reps. Because we want to make it muscle memory for them. So when they leave here, it's it ingrained in their memory that this, hey, this is okay. It's, it's a soft technique. So they're comfortable when faced with a real life danger. It's always an option to wave goodbye. So if you don't like the way it feels, it doesn't feel safe to you. If it's not safe to the public at the time, that's when it's okay to back off. Two Utah Police Departments stopped using the technique. One claimed stability control in newer patrol cars lowered the likelihood of a successful pit, putting people at risk. These vehicles that we use in training are not equipped with stability control, so they spin pretty easily. Uh, newer vehicles, we, we do have to add just a little bit more input to, to help that along, but, but we've, we've not seen anything that, that makes it more dangerous. ABC6 reviewed several Central Ohio pursuit policies. The ones for the Franklin County Sheriff's Office and Columbus Police are similar. An officer and deputy should try to get supervisor approval first, and it's recommended a second patrol car be in place. CPD's 2019 revised policy also states a pit shall not be used to help an outside agency that doesn't conform to division's policy. It may be used by Ohio State Highway Patrol with supervisor permission, but only by those properly trained. Right now, OSHP doesn't have a pit certified employee. Opata trainers don't dictate a department's pursuit policy, but welcome the chance to put more officers in the driver's seat. More people that, that were exposed to the training, I think the better off we would all be. Even for departments that don't want to utilize the maneuver a lot, uh, they might find themselves in a situation at some point in time someday where, hey, it'd be nice to have this tool.